Alright guys, so welcome back and uh, welcome to the Inferno tutorial. So uh, I already made the deck there, so what's gonna happen is that I'll walk through to the cards we normally have and I'll move towards uh, other cards. So first of all, uh, let's get this started. Um, so yeah, when you play Inferno, what you want to do is that you want to do as much damage as possible and uh, finish off your opponent before he actually has a chance of stabilizing. That is normally one of the f best goals uh, for Inferno. There's also the late game Inferno, but that is in a special deck with Demaria. It does work as well with discarding cards and getting the card advantage and stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, this is going to be for another video. Moving on, uh, let's get you started guys with a good Garant deck. So Garant here has 1-1-2, one, one, so he has 2 Destiny, which is quite interesting there. Uh, so that means that he can get those Fortune without actually having to level up. And most of the big uh, Inferno Fortunes cards actually just cost uh, 1 or 2, so that's quite nice. Then uh, you have Primal and Fire, which are quite a good calls as well. Alright, let's get started, guys. So the uh, events they give out for free at the beginning is this one. So, uh, the one that I really like is Week of the Dead. Why? Because it actually allows you to kill your own creature. Why could that be good? Hmm. It could be good for a few reasons. One of the reasons would be uh, you have uh, one of the card here, which is a bloater that you have to have to make him explode anyhow. Uh, I'll get to it later on. And uh, you also have. Um, so yeah, that is a good card because it's one-sided. So definitely uh, try to get two. I think two or three is like the correct number for Inferno normally. You want to kill your own creatures to get the effect when they die. That's pretty good. Moving on, celebration. Not a fan of that because you can be utilized in both ways. And as I said, uh, one-sided events are just just better. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, same thing with that. It can help you out, but it can also help out your enemy. So it's all right. Not a fan of that specifically. Okay, yeah, it's aggressive, but Inferno has a lot of low HP creatures. So I'm not so sure what they taught when they made Ale Storm, and it costs a lot too. But yeah, it's not, I'm not a fan of that specifically. So, however. Uh, they give you Monster of the Deathifying, which is the aggressive one, which gives you plus one attack and plus one intelligence, which is super good. Uh, as I said, with Inferno, you want to do the damage, get in, and uh, finish up your opponent before it stabilizes. So that is definitely a great card there. Uh, one of the events you should aim for whenever you play uh, that kind of like mid-range kind of attack-ish creature-based uh, deck is Mount of, I mean, Week of Mercenaries. Uh, if you play more than 35 cards, uh, normally in a deck what you want to aim for is 30 to 35, 36 creatures in a uh, deck and then move towards fortune or spells, maybe do some a little bit of hybrid, but not too much, as there are events called Week of Taxes and Mana Storm. I'll get to it right away, just to explain to you quickly. So whenever there's a uh, fortune that's being played and that uh, Week of Taxes being there, it's going to cost one more. If not, you take one damage, which is quite quite a bad stuff there. So this is why people tend to send things for, for magic. And, uh, oops, I'll have to call my friend a bit later on. Okay, let's get back to it, guys. Uh, so yeah, so Mana Storm, uh, same thing as uh, Week of Texas there, which is quite interesting. Four spells. Moving on, uh, you have... Uh, what's interesting, yeah, is Week of Mercenaries, because it only costs three, compared to uh, Monster Disc Flame, which costs five. So the less it costs, and you can actually get the advantage pretty easily. Uh, if you don't get it, you just draw a card, and then you have another chance to get a creature. And if you play normally these uh, kind of rushy decks creatures, uh, Wicked Mercenary is just going to be uh, really good, because it's going to trigger most of the time. So yeah, uh, moving on to creatures. What did they give you? Uh, they give you a uh, Maniacs. Quite a decent creature by itself. 2-1-2, one, two, one cost. Gets uh, you... Uh, it, I'll actually start with a snowball. Amazing card. Uh, normally, uh, these rush decks want to go for three, maybe four of these. Really good card there. Hellhound, I don't know why they gave you that. It is such a bad card. <laughs> Only one damage and sweep attack and two HP. It only doesn't have retaliation. Uh, no one plays that in the end game. Don't play it, please. Uh, try to get uh, something instead like that. Try to get more of these maniacs if you can. That is, I mean, it's okay, right? It, it sweep attack, but you have to boost it to really get maximum value. So I'm not a fan of that card. Uh, this card is a neutral card. I, I don't know why they included it as well. Uh, one cast to attack. It's not that great for two damage. And uh, 4 HP. 4 HP is okay. It's a melee creature. It can be okay. But the bad stuff is still quite bad. And when you can have a Succubus, right? Why would you go for this guy? Hmm. Uh, Succubus, uh, one of the staples creatures. Normally you want to have 3 or 4 of these. Amazing card. 2 damage, 4 HP. And the requirements, you meet them normally with Garant. So that is no problem at all. Moving on, uh, they give the Breeder, not a fan of that card, uh, one damage has the other one, not so great, it's okay, but it's not that decent. Magic Channel can help you out a little bit, uh, but 2 HP for 2 costs is way too low, 
way too low. Uh, I don't like that card at all. Uh, we don't see those cards being played in the eye hand uh, field of tears. So yeah, don't try to play that. It's not that, that great, really. Moving on to uh, the Demented. Demented are quite good. Quite good, yeah. Yeah, because they have sweep attack and humans resolution for the cost. So it's a decent alternative possibility from Succubus at the beginning. Uh, normally, uh, advanced players are going to be able to uh, see Swoop Attack coming, and they're actually going to do something about it. Or otherwise, it's okay. Uh, but yeah. Otherwise, I would say Succubus is just a bit better than the Demented. It depends on what kind of gameplay you want to go for. And also Bloaters. So what's nice about this guy is that he blocks normally two creatures by himself. And Firebirds 4. So this is a scenario, you play against uh, Sanctuary, and the Sanctuary player has a specific card which is which has Ambush, uh, a range, uh, it's called CMS Stalker, uh, whatsoever. Uh, it's a 203, and when there's uh, somebody that comes into the row, deployed into the row, it takes 2 damage. Good thing is they have 2 HP. Is that, it's gonna do Fire Burst Force, it's gonna get the whole row, and that is quite a good value for that. But in other scenarios, it's just gonna block most of the attackers there, and uh, if you use that card specifically, Fire Burst 4, with uh, Week of the Dead, you can trigger yourself that ability, and that's where it comes in handy. The Fire Burst 4 is quite good for only 2 costs, right? But you need the event to make it like more efficient, but still, it's quite decent. Uh, this card is alright, some of, of these players play it. Normally, it's more for control-ish, but 3 damage to enemy hero if he dies, so it could be okay. It's not that great. You don't want to have too much of these. What you want for 3 costs is this guy. Check it out. That guy is just value. You get 434 for 3 cost 3 mines. It's amazing. It's super good. Um, this is why I really recommend to go for reinforcement packs. Unlock that. Uh, get uh, that. Uh, get those juggernauts. Get all those top like backbone cards you really need. And then move towards a world of war. Why a world of war? Because you get maniacs. You get uh, big uh, sweep attack guys. You get uh, IQ, which is a new unique guy, you get awesome stuff. So, really try to go for reinforcement and irrelevant void with the gold that is, and try to get a bit of the uh, five towers just to get the wild cards because you get for each 56 uh, seals you spend on to the five towers, you get a wild card as I previously mentioned. And um, yeah, so if you go for the others, it's only going to be for each 80, so you get less value. But yeah, you still get more better cards for Inferno if you aim for Rail the Void. So it's it's a choice to make. Moving on, Cerberus, uh, quite a decent uh, card by itself, but it has sweep attack as I said, and for three costs. It is basically the upgrade of the little doggy there. It's okay. Um, it's not great. Uh, later on in the game, people are gonna be able to avoid that sweep, and three HP is quite weak. It dies to most of the AOE. Uh, at least this guy doesn't die to most of the AOE. Uh, when I say AOE, uh, I'm thinking about Insect Swarm. Insect Swarm is a three cost, uh, three requirement. Uh, magic uh, spell that does 3 damage to all creatures, it's, it is a thing, most of the high yellow players play that, so you're gonna be wary of that possibility, when it has 3 HP, it's gonna die that quickly. Same thing for Cerberus, uh, 3 HP, the ability is quite nice, attack anywhere, it seems quite good, immune to retaliation, that card is a snobbling card. If you have 1 and 2, and uh, it does, your opponent doesn't remove them, normally your opponent's gonna have some kind of removal, for sure, at least in his deck. Uh, it's gonna help you out a lot. And 2 damage, attack anywhere, seems uh, pretty good, then it is pretty good. But uh, it's so easy to remove, so it's not being true that much. Uh, not only people want to go for 4 of these Juggernauts, it's just so much value, so much good. Uh, neutral creatures are normally worse than the faction creatures, so yeah. Moving on to the forecast now, Ravagers. Yeah, that's right, 6 damage, that's amazing guys. Uh, try that once, uh, you won't regret it, and if you can actually utilize those spells with Garant, since he has Prowl Magic, and he can teleport, he can Town Portal, 6 damage is amazing. Uh, not only is going to get you the game there, this guy is amazing. Uh, you want to win 3, maybe 4 of these guys, just try to get them uh, whenever you can. If it's a common or uncommon, just like the Juggernaut, it's easy to get with wall cuts. Moving on. Elfire's Life is okay. It's not a superbly good card, but it's quite decent. Uh, 4 4 4. Okay, why not? Uh, everything costs 4. <laughs> Interesting. Anyhow, uh, 4 damage and 4 retaliation, 4 HP. Uh, really, you don't want to go for that for the damage and shooter. And yeah, that's it. That's the only reason. It could be okay, but it's super easy to remove and it's super weak to fireball. So I'm not a fan of that specifically, but it's still worthwhile. Moving on. Uh, Lashing Limb, it's a, a card from a uh, Forget the Wars expansion, but I find quite interesting that they put that there. Uh, it looks alright. Sweep attack and shooter, so you can like decide back row or uh, melee row. It's decent by itself. Uh, 2 to 6, good values, but there's something better as a common, really. And Green uh decent stats, neutral, not that great. Uh, okay stats. 
cost too much. Uh, you know what? Just don't use that guy. He's so bad. Don't play him. Try to get something else. Try to get Juggernaut instead. <laughs> He's just that bad. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about the creatures you're supposed to go for. So yeah, uh, try to get the Maniacs reinforcement packs. Uh, that's what they are at. Try to get the four Succubus. They're just that good reinforcement packs as well. So Inferno is mostly about reinforcement pack and Error of the Void. This is Error of the Void. Uh, this guy is pretty good by itself. This guy pretty good as well. But this Bloater is more for control, right? So that's why I'm not saying it's that great. Uh, get a rent, so you don't want to go for the damage. Uh, this this Elfire Imp has quite the value, but it costs 2 2 on Fire Burst. He's okay, but it's super easy to remove. I still prefer a Succubus overall. It's such a stable, good creature there. Moving on, um, you might want to go for the Spout with Dead Seekers if you have the chance. Uh, again, reinforcement pack. And for the only reason that it helps to get the final damage through. And it does, really. And that's what you might want to go for when you play Garants. You play Inferno. So, yeah. Decent creature by itself, and then you have Juggernauts, yeah, get four of them, it's just superbly good. And yeah, the, I don't know why they didn't include that card, it used to be there before, Lilims. Only cost four. Uh, so yeah, you see the Lashing name was 2 to 6, right, with Sweep Attack. This girl has three, and it's not reliant on Sweep. Sweep Attack is going to be played, uh, for sure, you, but you have a few of the Sweep Attack in your deck, right? But your opponent's going to see it coming. And if you see it coming, it's not going to do that much, trust me, so the Lilim is just better. It's just better in Blia. Like, eventually it's going to be better. At the beginning, people aren't going to see it coming at the low elo. But if you get higher in the elo, it's it's just going to be seen. And people are going to play uh, zigzag and stuff. It's going to be hard to land that up. However, Lilim is uh, probably the best. Because it survives to all the removal out there. 8 HP is ridiculous. And 8 HP for only 4 cast. This card is just value. Uh, play it. Get it. Uh, it's cheap, it's common, it's reinforcement pack, it's probably gonna cost you one or two wall cards, it's just that good. Okay, breeding mother, not a fan, as I said, I'm not having these uh, breeders. However, ravagers, yeah, as I said, try to get three or four, it's gonna help you with the current deck. And if you're looking for more advanced deck uh, with special special creatures and stuff, I really recommend you guys to go to mmdockking.com and try to look at the latest deck, it's always uh, updated by expansion and stuff, so try to take a look there, guys, and learn from it and build your own deck, and uh, yeah. And uh, there's definitely new metas, but I'm just trying to get you guys a good Garant deck to get started, to get currency, and then get more cards, and then eventually uh, get for the uh, specific, uh, uh, how could I say that, uh, specific decks. Yeah, exactly, where you try to aim for one specific goal there. Moving on, uh, I would, you know, this card looks amazing, it looks super good, and like, oh, I want to play that guy, 7 damage, oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, Averager does 6 damage, it costs 1 less. He has one more HP, and as I said, and I'm gonna say it again, uh, Insect Swarm is a thing, it does 3 damage to all creatures, and this guy has 3 HP, it is so easy to remove, and Ravager is 4 HP, it is so much harder to remove, play Ravagers, don't play that guy, I used to play that guy, I was like, oh, 7 damage, teleport, that was amazing, it's okay. <laughs> and what do you get for, um, um, Forgotten War, no, it's Ever of the Void, it's this guy, and this guy. That guy's a 2 for 1. If you have to go for 5 mites, you gotta play Elfire and Maniac. It is so good! It gets Berserk, so you can decide which one, which cards you wanna go for. It attacks in their turn, then you can do damage to them. It's amazing. Uh, try it, 1, 2. Uh, if you go for 5 mites, you gotta, you gotta try these guys. They're super good, super amazing board controllers. And you have a uh, Krag. Some people, look, some people are gonna say they're bad. In the beginning, I believe they're good. For the only reason that you have so much of these good stats, I don't think it's 5, 5 might, might as well, but Sweep Attack and Berserk. Okay, so the problem with Berserk there is that you drop it down, you can't move anymore, right? But it has 4 damage, it has Sweep Attack, it has 5 deletion, it has 6 HP, this card... This, this guy is gonna get you 2 cards for 1. Why? Because the opponent is gonna have to deal with it, and it's so fucking hard to deal with that guy. It's gonna have to do a uh, creature and removal to get him. Then it's 2 for 1, 2 for 1, you win card advantage, good stuff. So, yeah, if you have a chance to get one of these and you're starting the game, uh, it's not so bad, try him out. And of course, you get the Dubrigger, which is a unique guy. So, this guy works just well with the week uh, of the dead there. Because you can decide when it dies. And when you decide when it dies, you can actually uh, bait the opponent to like, go all in. And the tactic is that you use the Dumbrigger to be able to drop it down and like clear the board and just make him think that you're going all in, right? But you're not. And you're using the Dumbrigger with Week of the, week, uh, week, uh, of the Dead there, killing it, destroying all creatures in play, and then playing your 
big creatures right after. So uh, it's pretty good. So of course you get those all big badass as creatures, but I'm gonna go there for the only reason that uh, I want to help you guys build a good Garen deck. If you want to specify decks, go to uh, MMDOC and feel free to take a look there. Okay, so moving on, we have Primal and Fire. Let's get this started. So we started with Fire Bolts, really good card. Uh, try them out for sure, it's pretty good. Uh, normally, this is a staple removal, super good. This one magic super good as well. Normally, when I want to run two, I don't know why they only give one. Uh, two is the decent number if you want to go for these removals. Teleport, uh, super good card by itself as well. Record target creeping creature. So the goal with teleport is that you're gonna get Ravager, you're gonna get Juggernauts, teleporting four damage, teleporting six damage. That card is value on the cost two, and it's a removal by itself. Why? I use your own creature to kill other creatures, teleporting stuff all around. I used to run three of these. Uh, it was fun times. Definitely a super good spell there. You have combustion, quite bad. Uh, fair dash, quite bad as well. So so if maybe one damage. Uh, you have to go for Dawn Portal. You have to get there. It's reinforcement too. It's so good. It's so amazing. Dawn Portal uh, is basically a Dawn Why would I say that? Your opponent plays big creatures. You play a creature that costs six, seven resources. Dawn Portal back. For three cost. It's gonna play it again. That's too bad, isn't it? Well, you gotta can, can do damage. He, he puts a big blocker in front of your Ravager that does six damage. You bounce it, that blocker out of out of there. Uh, Dawn Portal for three cost. Six damage in. That is so good. So normally in the Garen's uh, mid-range deck, you want to have two or three of these. Fireball, if you go for four, might, uh, four magic, sorry, get that. It's going to help you clear the board and finish up your opponents. Normally two or three is the correct number here. Uh, what if you want to what you should be going for? Um, not a fan of that. I kind of like Inner Fire. People don't like it that much. It's similar to Fireball because it gives you two more damage, but it's going to help you finish the game. Why? Two more damage to your own creature, two more damage to the opponents. And it's a surprise card. I like surprise cards. Uh, I feel like people don't play too much of these surprise cards. They try to stick to these standard decks. But what's nice about surprise cards is that they're not going to see it coming. They think they, they know what you're playing, but nah, yeah. you're going to have some surprise cards. It's going to change very. It, it, it's all about tempo. So I like the surprise cards. Moving on, uh, there's some a few dang, things that are okay, but I'm not going to go through everything. But yeah, Time Portal, Staples. Uh, if you play Primal, Primal Magic, normally you're going to have Strong Portal. Try it. <laughs> it's just so good. And give you one for free, so try to get them. And it's a reinforcement pack. So really, Inferno, reinforcement pack, air of the Void, and then try to unlock the others and get uh, more variety later on. Also, uh, a good removal is Minor Recall. Why? Because it's Fortune as well. And this is a of the Void again, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it's Return Target Spells and Ongoing. Some form Fortune, there's a few Fortunes that's going to stop uh, you from attacking, which is the... Worst thing that you can hope for when you play Garrett. So this guy, uh, this card is going to be just fine uh, getting that fortune back to its end, so it's going to pay it again. Okay, it doesn't remove it, but it's uh, flexible. Uh, spell and fortune, so it's pretty good. And yeah, if you decide to go for Fireball, that means you have to pick up this. And this is again, Era of the War, you know, I keep saying that, but it is. Uh, it's super good. The other message, every creature equal to double your magic. So a good tactic to go for is that when you have those Lilim, which is... 318 HP. You use Forbidden Flame with 3 magic requirements. You do 6 damage to everything. Your Lilim is going to stick, still be alive. And you may be able to play, let's say, more Maniacs or lower level creatures. But your 3 damage shooter is going to be there and ready to get your tempo started. So I really like that. Uh, normally, if you have to go for 4 might, you want to try to get Unix. The Unix are super good. Uh, Unix spells are just staples. Except uh, Primal Unix spell. It's quite ordinary. I'm going to show it to you guys. I have it somewhere. Maybe I, maybe I don't have it because it's that bad. Anyway, it's called uh, Gate of Nowhere. It's not that great. Not really use it. But yeah, try to get Firebolts. Try to get that. If you go for four, uh, if you go for Firebolts, try to should get that. Maybe Inner Fire could work. It's not that great. It's okay. It's a bit better in Sanctu in Evan because you're gonna have more creatures on the field. Uh, Inferno, you're gonna have two or three, and you're gonna try to teleport and Town Polar and do the damage. It's all right. Moving on to Fortune. You get a few good Fortune, but most of them are quite bad. That's good. Why? Because you can put uh, a Ravager faster, you can put a, jur uh, a Juggernaut faster, so that's pretty good here. And you don't have to go for level up, because you have two Fortune already. That is good if your opponent plays Magic Peddler. Magic Peddler adds, helps you, because it's gonna get you a unique into your hand, and now you know he has that unique in his hand, you can make him discard it, and those spells, uniques, are just so good, that discarding a 1-1 one, one for 1 cost is just 
it's just amazing. That, that is pretty good. That's garbage. Uh, try to get uh, something else. Uh, Twist of Fates. It's pretty good. It's alright. Uh, you can choose anything. So it can be a unique creature, a big badass creature. Ah, you won't play it today. Sorry, man. So Twist of Fates is quite decent. Get of No Awesome Madness. Quite good as well. It's okay. But you can understand when you play and you make these cards. It's not like Magic the Gathering. What you have to understand is that uh, every time you discard a card, uh, your opponent can get two cards a turn. And let's say in a scenario where your opponent has zero card. It is his turn. You have this card in your hand. Right? Well, you can play it and expect... It. It's a snowballing card. So it's okay, but it's not being played that much. Trust me. It's okay. This is better. Why? Because it's two cards for one. So you get a card advantage, and if you get the snowball going, you get really lucky. It can be quite fun. Uh, I used to play a bit of those. That's alright. And... Uh, that's okay as well. That's not so bad. But what it should aim for is, as I said, it's trying to get damage and finish up your opponent. So we want to go for this. I don't know why I did a game out for free. It's a reinforcement pack as well, so you can be able to get quite fast. Take a card from your hand and put it face down, so that means that uh, the card you have in your hand. So you need to have two cards in your hand to play that. This and another one, and it's going to remove your options. So the, the base tactic with this alter destruction is that you use it to finish up your opponent only. Because if you don't, if you do it in the early game, the problem is that it's going to reduce your options. But if you do it at the end game, it's not. Because you're going to have six cards, and you, you know you have three altars, six damage, bam, 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 you finish them up. So yeah. So they get four of these. Normally that's the staples for Garants. Also, there's good, interesting uh, cards that came out in the four towers. And uh, this is why I'm doing it again, because I can't really say goodbye in Forgotten Wars. You get more wild cards than so true. And it won't. I would say go for a Rel the Void, Enforcement Pack, and then move out towards the value of wild cards there. So a good creature that came out is... Uh, oops, sorry. Let's go for creature. It's only, I think I'd say, it two costs. This card is going to be amazing. So if you have a chance and you have extra seals, uh, try to get that. Anyway, you're going to get value out of the wild cards. It's not so bad at the beginning, that is. And uh, if you're really lucky, you're going to get that card here. Sorry for the uh, thingy. It's a 2-2, two, two, so it costs 2 fortune. What's good about Garrett? You have two destiny release. That's perfect. It has ambush. Ambush creature. Uh, this got a card at random. It's amazing. It's super good. And it's two zero three. So it's a super good alternative to succubus. I think we're gonna see more of these. And that's what succubus. I think they're gonna be the new staple to drop. So yeah, if you have a chance, uh, hit that uh, five towers. Get this guy. Pretty good there. And if you want for more advanced get, uh, decks out there, guys, if you come to MMDOC King, uh, take a look. And uh, try to learn from the latest decks out there, the most rated and stuff. And uh, we're also free to uh, join us on Twitch and ask us any questions. Everybody in the community is super awesome. They're going to be glad to help you out. So that's it, guys. That's it for my Inferno tutorial. Have fun and chills. See ya.